Hello, I'm Neil Huang. I'm Scott Shin. We're doing a project on the hidden Markov model. A little bit about the history of the Markov chain. It was published in 1913 by Andre Markov. He proposed a uh, stochastic process that went beyond just the independent events such as rolling a dice that was mostly studied at the time. This is a picture of him. Um, so what is a Markov chain? Uh, well, Markov chain is a stochastic process, which are, is basically a family of random events, which means one thing will lead to another. And Markov chains are a memory list, um, which means that future states only depend on the current state, which saves a lot of time. Um, so Markov, uh, this is also known as the uh, Markov property, which we have an equation down here. So it's saying that state x to the n equals to, um, can be determined with x to n minus one instead of having everything from every number before n minus one. Uh, so there are three assumptions to this Markov chain though that it must follow. And the three assumptions are as follows. The probability has to apply to all participants in the system and the transitional probabilities are constant and unchanging and the states are independent over time. So there's a lot of rules to follow. As you can see here, here's a small diagram. If we're going from A to B, there's a 0.1 chance probability of going from A to B and a 0.5 chance of A circling to itself. So that's a very simple Markov chain example. And for the hidden Markov model, the forward backward algorithm used in hidden Markov model was first described by Roslin in 1960. In the second half of the 1980s, hidden Markov models began to be applied to the analysis of biological sequences, in particular DNA. Since then, they have become important in the field of bioinformatics. Yes. So what is a hidden Markov model? A hidden Markov model is a statistical Markov model in which the system being modeled is assumed to be a Markov process. Call it X with n observable states. And the hidden Markov model assumes that there's another process Y whose behavior depends on X. And the goal is to learn about X by observing Y. And here's like a formula about the hidden Markov model. So um, the difference between a Markov chain and a hidden Markov model is that uh, while well, the Markov model, well, the hidden Markov model is hidden, uh, which means only observational data um, is observed. For example, you, you won't need to have any of the transitional probabilities and you would just need to figure out which, um, what's the probability of a certain event happening given the observational data. And the, the hidden Markov model is used to solve four different types of problems. First one is a decoding problem, which is given the model parameters and the observation sequence estimate the most likely hidden, uh, which estimates the most likely hidden state or sequence. Um, and the evaluation problem is given the parameters and the op uh, observation sequence, find the probability of said sequence. And then the training problem is given a observation sequence estimate the model parameters. And finally, the optimi optimization estimate uh, estimates the uh, problem, estimates the uh, op observation sequence uh, state probabilities and model parameters that maximizes a given observation. So now let's take a look at an example of hidden Markov model in a weather guessing game. Consider two friends. A and B, who live far apart from each other and who talked together daily over the telephone about what they did that day. B is only interested in three activities, as you can see. The first is walking in the park. The second is shopping. And the third is cleaning his apartment. The choice of what to do is, is determined 
exclusively by the weather on a given day. He has no definite information about the weather, but she knows general trends based on what B tells her he did that day. A tries to guess what the weather must have been like. And A believes that the weather operates as a discrete Markov chain, where there are two states, rainy and sunny, but she cannot observe them directly. That is, they're hidden from her. And on each day, there's a certain chance that Bob will perform, perform one of the following activities, as you can see on the diagram, which depending on the weather, uh, walk, shop, or clean. Since B tells A about his activities, those are the observations. And this entire system is that of a hidden Markov model. And in R, we could actually use the activity B did on day one to predict the weather on day two by applying the hidden Markov model. So in R, we first plug in the transition matrix, which is uh, if it's raining on day one, the probability of it rain again on day two is 0.7, and the probability of it's sunny on day two is 0.3. And if it's rainy, I mean, if it's sunny on day one, the probability of it it's rainy on day two is 0.4, and the probability of it's sunny again on day two is 0.6. And then we plug in the emission matrix as well, which is similar to the transition matrix. But now it's about either B is going to walk, shop, or clean based on the weather. And finally, uh, we combine the two matrix together and generate a prediction of what the weather will be like based on what activity B did. So for this random result from R, as you can see in the uh, at the end of this slide. If B goes shopping and the weather is sunny on day one, we could predict that the weather will most likely be sunny again if B cleans his apartment on day two. Okay, some other applications of the uh, hidden Markov chain uh, include things such as signal processing, which are kind of like you, know, you process images and stuff like that, and artificial intelligence, which is everywhere in our technology right now, speech recognition and bioinformatics, bioinforma like we discussed before. Um, and it generally applies to everything that has a sequence of observations. Uh, a very prominent example of this is uh, Siri and Alexa, which are on all our phones and recognize what we're saying. So in conclusion, hidden Markov chains like Markov chains uh, are very useful uh, nowadays and it's used in many technologies um, and it has a lot of great potential in artificial intelligence which is going to come in really handy for future technology. And some difficulties uh, that might we that this uh, process has is it does need a accurate applicable and a very large data set to actually be able to generate anything um, complicated and computations can be very very difficult to process even for a computer well thank you guys very much these are our sources <laughs> <I didn't. laughs>